coming here to Elm Meetup. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to learn about Elm. It's just sometimes I could not use Elm. I had to use some other language. And having the, it in mind that there are tricks like strong types that really help you with development of certain systems. As, as we already heard today, I thought, okay, so if there are tricks, we should keep using them if we can. So whenever I can, whenever the team allows and, and other constraints allow, I try to use them. And I, I consider the strongly, strongly typed languages in general to be one of the top tricks of, of basically our era in terms of programming. The, the other tricks that are worth mentioning is probably fuzzing here. Yeah? And, and the, these, these two tricks sometimes really go a long way. I mean, I, I've written a complete, complete application with a few thousands and lines of code that mostly were tested only by strong types and one really well-designed fuzzer. And that was enough. That, that fixed all the other problems I had with this application, besides minor UI issues, which is, which is really serious. So I would say since, since I, I've been basically always in the, in the domain of kind of economizing delivery of software, you know, you don't know what you are doing. You just want to learn what you are doing. And in the process, you want to be in, in, on some reasonable schedule, if it, even if you are not certain the schedule is right. I, I still was doing it all the time. So then these tricks are invaluable. So uh, in this presentation, I will show PureScript, which is another language very similar to Elm and Haskell. It allows you to use JavaScript both on the front end and the back end. And that was actually why I was attracted to it, because I wanted to use Node.js for something. And I didn't have even access to Node.js server directly. So uh, basically, it was constrained environment. Yeah? Because you can use Elm test to run the things on the back end, but uh, I, it's not at least at the moment, it's not apparent for me how to do it in Node.js server hosted somewhere else, like Lambda AWS, yeah? Or I will show another example, which is Game of Scripts. And I predict that there will be more and more platform like this, where you just put any JavaScript, hopefully soon any WebAssembly, and, and you can run it because that's safe very, very well controlled environment, yeah? It's like containers are preferred to giving you a whole virtual machine. So since we are in the cloud development, a lot of us, I think it will be of increasing interest. You send the code that is JavaScripty, and you get whatever you want done, yeah? And you don't need to, to worry about management, but on the other hand, you have to run it somewhere where you don't really know what it happens. So it's, it's very close to like pure JavaScript. Sometimes I, I tested some things as pure JavaScript first just to make sure that it will work at all on the server. Yeah, because it may be kind of weird JavaScript environment. Like web workers, I think, are a bit weird if you look at it. But you would like to write web workers code in Elm, wouldn't you? And that, that, that's basically what, what drove me to to try PureScript. So I will demonstrate it in a browser for the node server and as AI for scripts.com, for which I, I, I think I published open source. Uh, I basically, I took open source library for, for wrapping JavaScript function into PureScript. It was very easy. I will show how to do it and, and put a new version with better types. Yeah. And then we can talk about like advantages of Elm and PureScript. I would, since Pure, uh, PureScript and Elm are very close, and Elm has very, very many advantages in terms of speed and code size. I would really like to see see future, you know, intertwining or or somehow uh, shifting of the features between languages because both both opinionated Elm, which gives very very high quality solution and kind of a very elastic pure script have their advantages. And by the way, I 
already told, I'm, I'm now a senior developer in Jewel Payment Tech and uh, we are hiring. We are hiring front-end programmers, so front-end, back-end, so in case you want. And I will uh, basically show the FFI example, I think I mentioned that. So this is the first example. So the first awareness is that your npm install post pure script compiler. Then you use a different package manager, which is Bower, to install every pure script library. Even if you use it on the backend, it's usually in Bower. I understand that authors just converge on Bower as a better package manager than npm is, in their opinion, because Bower is basically using mostly things hosted on GitHub. So it doesn't require mu much hosting. Also, it d directly refers to GitHub commits. So basically, when you register package to Bower, you send information. This is my GitHub repository, and this is my commit. And that's what we are seeing more and more often. You see Vim plugin managers that also do that, because GitHub nicely provides both hosting service and the, and the repo service. And that's, that's killer application. And that means that so many headaches are, are gone. Yeah. Then after you do this and you write your program in SFC repository, you use pulp build. This is basically a builder that generates JavaScript. So that's, that's kind of similar to Elm, but, but maybe a little bit different. Then the second awareness here is that instead of having this, this prescribed model view, it, it took a different route where you have an EFF monad that can do literally everything and is imperative, basically. So in EFF monad, you can have any effect as long as you declare it. And here we see there is console effect, which basically means that I'm writing to console. And there is polymorphism EFF, which means maybe I will do something else, but I don't know. I didn't decide. Maybe other parts of the program will want to do this. So log is basically printing to the console. It's console log in, in JavaScript. And log show is first applying a show function that is the same in both languages and then logging it. So the starting is very similar. This is, this is the simplest program. And the, the only reason that I, I picked PureScript was that I can run it on, on the server so quickly. Yeah? I don't need to, to because the, this is yet functionality that you want to see in them. Now, PureScript in a browser is not much different. There is a little bit more imports that I skipped here to add, usually for things like monads. You sometimes need to import control monad or control monad EFF for everything to work because it's very, very fine in imports. That's in order to reduce code size. I s think there is still a little bit room for improvement in this regard because I've seen the code included. It was a bit more, but I usually got, got my stuff in one or two megs. So of JavaScript, so even after all includes, and I use a lot of libraries, usually. Then you see a little bit different way, because if you say import jQuery library, then you can program in jQuery style. So this ready is basically document ready function. So if when ready, you start doing something very similar to with this JavaScript. So this is essentially imperative. It's a little bit less safe, but sometimes it allows you to do certain tricks where you want to kind of control your framework or do something in cutting the corners. Yeah. So here you just, in ready function, you pick the body of the document and then you create a diff. These are all imperative actions, like appending the, the new element to the diff or the body. It depends what you want. Really. So I guess if you are starting the really pure front-end <coughs> application with, with constraints on, on basically the big team and, and you really want maximum safety, you probably still want 
ELM style, yeah, because ELM will prescribe this model view system and will prevent these imperative tricks. But if you are, you know, on the corner, you want to use a lot of JavaScript libraries, as, as I usually, unfortunately, do, so I, I'm really pulling on the, on the existing open source code whenever I can, then you may use the jQuery directly. Yeah? You, you know that the jQuery already has the knowledge there in JavaScript community. And another example is that's actually the example that I found uh, I think w this is one of the only, only, only compilers that works so easily here, is that you have this, this node server that is controlled by somebody else, some, somewhere afar. So you just give them JavaScript code and you expect this code to be behaving like the JavaScript code that they give you in the example. Yeah? In this case, this is imperative code that is run every turn of the game and every turn is about three seconds now. Initially, it was expected to be one second, but the number of players increases, even with all the parallelization. So it is run every second. It has, I think, now between 30 or, or, or 600 milliseconds to run, run per, per player, depending on the player's level. And in this time, it can query the world and you need to be very careful about this because if you just attempt to you know, do it pure functional way and query all, all the information you can, you will be too slow. Yeah? You will exceed the time. The time, time limits are very strict, especially if you do a lot of uh, allocation of memory. Yeah? And if you query a lot of objects, you will allocate a lot of objects. And then propose the action to all your your kind of soldiers in this game. So the soldiers are in this case buildings and, and scripts, which are small robots that can move energy around, can fight with each other and so on. Yeah? So this is actually a very good programming game. I do recommend it to people that want to learn JavaScript or want to learn any language that can be compiled to JavaScript and put on somebody else's node server. Yeah? It is good because it has rather complex economy, so there is a lot of interesting thing to start programming with, and you can do pathfinding your own, because of course, games pathfinding is a little bit inefficient and large scale. So, you know, the, the, the curve is rather, rather smooth. So you start by using the games pathfinding, if then you find it inefficient, you improve on that. There are a lot, a lot of algorithms you can, you can write. If you do a lot of algorithms and complex interactions, I would say JavaScript just is not the most efficient language for making a complex algorithmic code. You need something like Flow or something like TypeScript to check the types. You need something for testing. So there is actually a guy who produced just for this game the whole unit testing framework that fakes all the objects in the game AI that, that, that are queried by game AI. So all objects that are presented by the server to the game AI so that you can, you know, you can do unit testing of your AI. And there are a few thousands of players that write AIs, that play this game. So the community is, is rather l large for a programming game. So that also means that there is competition between algorithms and people start using very, very interesting strategies. So potentially the possibilities are quite, quite large and that means that your code base will grow. When I finished, uh, the last iteration of my AI, that was like, I don't know, 7,000 lines of code or so, without, without API from PureScript to JavaScript, of course. And what you see is also this type system really helps. So what, what PureScript also has is the type system with type classes. They are basically groups of types that have the same interface. And you can have, between type classes, you can have this kind of inheritance, which basically means that if, if, for example, you have an object that is a structure, then you know that it has property, has ID, has unique ID, because every, every object of this kind it has also unique ID. It is structural, which in this case is the class for having things that are having a number of hits and fixed position on the map. And it is a room object, sorry, that's a room object quality, that's fixed position on the map. And, and hits, that's structural. Thing. 
So we can use these type classes to model you know, that the functions have certain groups of objects that are not necessarily the same, that have the same interface. And that's very common for most JavaScript frameworks. So if it's large enough, it will need something like type classes. Yeah? And because it's JavaScript, then people feel very elastic about adding the function with the same name, with the same type signature, or the same behavior, to the objects that are totally different. So having a way to model this besides union types is very useful. That's also something I would dream to see now in the future. That would be great. But for now, I, I have to subside and, and use PureScript. And I'm pretty happy with PureScript. I mean, it's very, very efficient for the purpose. The only thing is, I mean, as I told, we are hiring. We need people that know PureScript <laughs> or Elm, really. And. Uh, here is, is an example of how simple it is to make API. So I found it's like one of the, the languages that have the simplest way of making API, if you know both JavaScript and PureScript. From this example, you immediately know how to make a constant. So basically, you have, say, two files, API.js and api purse. And PureScript file normally declares your code. Yeah, It, it describes your code. Uh, contains your code. Uh, and in this case, if you declare something foreign, it only contains the type. That's totally sufficient. Only type of the object. That means foreign function interface. Yeah. So you declare the type that you find fitting. And then in API, API JS, you just declare the function. The only thing to, that you need to, to make is that First, you, you put it in exports, yeah? So this will be the constant, yeah? So it, the value is really directly translated. The second thing is that for the function, you need to query it. So only one argument at the time. That's very simple. That actually can be, can be helped with functions that are very polymorphic and just convert the functions that have four arguments into, into uh, the basically element wise and I, I, again I would say that's good when you n know and have discipline to correctly cut the corners yeah because if you because if you cut the corners wrong yes only if you treat it as a foreign object so basically any object that is marked with a star in FFI can be anything or you can declare the type of for this object. This you can also declare in FFI. You can declare any new type for the object, and it's kind of opaque. And then you would have to have apply function that applies to four arguments functions, of three arguments functions. Uh, that would be a little bit inconvenient. Yeah. Uh, I hear that there was a company that made an extension of PureScript compiler that did only one thing for optimization of PureScript, which is basically automatically uncurring and currying function in the compiler. That gave uh, them a huge boon to the efficiency, and I would hope it to, to see this optimization in mainstream PureScript compiler. Unfortunately, to my knowledge, it's not yet matched. But yes, this, this, is to, this could be solved with a very clever compiler. And um, authors of PureScript do not prioritize that, but th th they prefer to solve it with a compiler than to make some other tricks to, to do it. Because as, as of now, it's me. I mean, it allocates a few functions, possibly. And you may have a, a problem with it if you try to make a very, very low location count JavaScript. But otherwise, it's, it's efficient enough. It doesn't. How does it, how does it how if you if you declare if you declare foreign function interface incorrectly, okay. you can get a JavaScript error. So technically, is not safe because safe means that since I know the type of text to live, yeah. 
using of this function is safe for the programmer that trusts the, 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 the FFI. This is unsafe because here, even if you trust the FFI, exposing this function can totally screw you because it doesn't stops checking in a way, yeah? because it makes the function type too polymorphic. It is sometimes useful, but it's not to be exposed to the end user. It's just, I mean, I'm, so sometimes you, you kind of, what you want are levels of unsafety or safety, you know? Sometimes the highest levels of safety is you have, you know, automatically proven verified compiler. The next level would be strong type system and only doing what is allowed by strong type system. But there are lower levels of safety, which basically means, you know, I trust that I examine these hundred lines of code of API that it conforms to the JavaScript API. But my 7,000 lines of code don't need to be checked anymore. Because if this hundred is good, then the other things are also good, yeah? So you are like, you decrease the surface the, of, of, the, of the possible, you know, uh, it's not attack of the possible uh, bug appearance, yeah? I would say if you are able to even divide your code somehow, like 80% or 90% code will contain much less errors because of strong types, yeah? Because th this, this is given. That's already, you know, 10 times the, 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 the less, less bugs. That's, that's the important thing. So how can it be safe? Because there is a possibility where if my implementation of unsafe view in JavaScript is wrong, then... Oh, when you use FFI and implementation in JavaScript is wrong, right, so then, nothing not ever safe, right? then, then nothing ever... Then nothing saves you. That, that's the penalty or risk for using FFI. Okay. And I mean, now, to be honest, uh, if you are using a compiler and there is a bug compiler, then nothing ever saves you either. It's just that you have much more trust in, in you know, the compiler like PureScript or M um, that is used by so many people already and that has been used to compile so many programs. You prefer to defer some checking to the compiler rather than, than your own eyes, yeah? So, you know, the safety is, in this case, about how much of the code you need to examine to find certain kinds of bugs. This, this example, in practice, you use it um, mostly to interface with uh, JavaScript library, right? Yeah. So, I mean, JavaScript library are known to be not safe because people are Yes, but if you want to use the JavaScript library, yeah, that, that's the design constraint. Yeah. You want to play scripts yeah. with strongly typed language. The only way is to use the server's interface, the AI interface, AI API, that is already in JavaScript. They don't provide the PureScript API. So what do you do about it? You make FFFI binding, and hopefully you share the code with other guys that they will test it, yeah? So there are, there are ways to, to, to work around this. You could say that, I mean, Elm also uses this in a, in a sense, right? Yeah. There are libraries uh, in the official package network that uses the unofficial FFI in the sense that they, they, they contain some native JavaScript code. Along the same lines, and we have just described, that uh, has been reviewed by multiple people and that are approved to be published. But you, as a single user, cannot publish packages you know, that use this kind of method because currently, you know, there's no system of showing that level of unsafeness or whatever, and probably never will, right? And that's also why, even though you can you can do stuff like this for your own code, in your own project, not sharing with anybody, uh, there is no official documentation on that file because it may change. It's not a supported interface. There's a different way to port, which is the official and safeguarded in and out of, of the runtime, right? but it is used in some of the standards. Yeah. So, so I guess I, I, I share the same question with him that says, like, depends on how you define the state, right? If you're talking about like test safety, which means like there's no runtime error, you can call this function, then this function might not be safe because when you call the letter file, it might fail runtime and runtime. But if you talk in terms of like a level of safetyness, then I guess, or if you define safety as like uh, something that's level lower than type safety, then 
it's 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 enforced contract. It's not just yeah, just just not any. Yeah. It's enforced by the compiler. Yeah. So that's kind of summary. I think I did something. Oh, it's still cut. Okay. So uh, here I see both solutions having really great advantages. So Elm is more robust because you know you have this limited number of packages that can use any unsafe program constructs. And thus, it is you know better reviewed. On the other hand, PureScript is elastic in this way. You can just put FFI and, and, and you know, kick FFI in, in a few days if you need it. And sometimes it is advantage. If you know FFI will be small, my project will be good, big compared to this. You probably want to go with this. Yeah. Because it's still better than using pure JavaScript. Yeah. And for some people, it's definitely better than using TypeScript. I would say uh, Elm still has great advantage in very elegant modeling of state. So there are pure script libraries for modeling the state, but uh, I, I have yet to see to find something as elegant as model views in Elm. Yeah, there are very similar libraries actually in pure script, but the the devil is in details. Yeah, I would say also there is there is very very coherent vision in. The in Elm, and in case of in PureScript, you have a lot of authors, and the package database is like very open, very embracing, and sometimes the, these packages are incoherent. Uh, do you know how the language is evolving? Is it like is there a group of people that? Are yeah, it's a group of people that evolves the language and pushes it together. It's it's relatively small and relatively uh, well communicated, but it's more than one person. Is it uh, still evolving language? Yes, it, it is evolving slower and slower, yeah. but uh, and certain uh, features that are being asked for, like uh, existential types or, or something like this, or rank to polymorphism, are definitely very low priority, or even integration of this optimization for carrying. But but yes, it is evolving. So uh, they, they, they try to keep up with Haskell feature-wise. Uh, you, you see frequently the changes that match the syntax of PureScript and Haskell. But the code is incompatible. Just look at EFF monad. That's a very incompatible change. Is there something you can do in PureScript that you can't do? Do they have features that are not? Uh, Sorry, that was a side. I, I, s I, I don't remember exactly that there was one or, or two quirks of type system that are actually very specific to pure script. But I, I, I looked at them and then I forgot about them. And I'm not sure they are still there. Because authors tend to, to try to you know, uh, go after the Haskell in terms of features of type system. Most of the time. Yes, yeah, so so there are th there are these these differences. Uh, th th so definitely there are things like lists that don't have special syntax in in pure script, for example. Yeah. So you need to say cons and the nil instead of of you know operators. But it is very similar. So. Any comp company backing behind pure script? I don't know. Has a uh, there is a company that uses. Script uh, heavily for for their websites. Uh, I I forgot the name now. I think it's one of them is CDN company and the other is oh I don't want to lie. Uh, so I would in advise you to check on the website to learn the specific names of the companies. To my belief, there is still a basically they are users. They are kind of power users, and they feel it beneficial for them to support their platform. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. In, in a way, it's, so it's not a, a project like Flow, it's more project like React. So it's not internal pr company project that has come open source or project 
made by a specific company that is open source by, by accident. It's more like the company supports the platform and there is more than one company. So we build on this platform, thus we, 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 we give back. When a company, because uh, as Techies United, we, we, we have all sorts of reasons to try new things and, and put it in our projects. Uh, what would make a company, the, the stakeholders, uh, adopt what, what they see as non mainstream platforms like PureScript and Elm? Uh, because when you talk to a. I think you person, underestimate the power of meritocracy. Because, you know, uh, companies are, in, in a way, entities like people that they have their goals and they want to realize it, you know, as soon as possible, usually, as well as possible. And from the point of view of the company, like any entity, it may be beneficial to do it, yeah? What I understand may happen is sometimes the companies uh, exhibit either environmental constraint or organizational re resistance. Environmental constraint is like how many programmers I can have that, that will program in script. Mm -hmm. And as you see with Elm, people catch up very fast. And our level of technology knowledge is increasing and our requirements are increasing so that people are expecting to learn more in any tech job. So this barrier of knowledge is really rapidly decreasing. You see people catch up new languages faster, thus remove other barriers yeah, for them, technical ones. On the other hand, there may be organizational constraint. You know, this, this very popular thing that some of the clients of the, of the company only want Java or some of, of, of the people in the company don't trust any platform that does not have backing of big company. And this is also changing because we have a lot of company, uh, a lot of platforms, a lot of technical solutions that are moving forward specifically because new companies choose their platforms, yeah? I understand that GitHub, for example, is mostly built on Rails, yeah? And you see, you know, since these companies are rapidly gaining traction, that means that it's basically fitness criterion. Yeah? You know, you see companies that use new technologies that may be, may be small initially, like PureScript or I don't know, gain traction, or Haskell was, yeah? And now, or Standard Chart uses a lot of Haskell. They have their own computer pilot, yeah? You know, and, um, you see, these companies gain traction. They find it cheaper to use certain, certain kinds of solutions. They will use more of these types of solutions. So then it means the other companies will try to compete them. And the same with Linux, you know. Initially, there was just one or two companies on the stock market that uses Linux. It uses Linux. Now everybody does, yeah, because it's fitness. It's the ability to reach your goals that you want to reach against the, the both technical and non-technical constraints.
considerations about uh, why I actually wanted to move, I, I, in a way I wanted to move people from Scala to Elixir and from JavaScript, whatever, Angular to something else. Not for big applications, yeah.